Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and today we're going to do an unboxing. Should be kind of fun. I did a transfer case controller, just the board for a customer. Basically they uh, want to add some features to it. So they sent it back and uh, we're going to open it up, take a look, take a look at some of the work that needs to be done, but just in general, take a look at what a .NET embedded device looks like. So here is the box that they sent. So this is an enclosure that they made. So let's take a look inside and see what we've got going on. This is the enclosure that they built. They printed this. It looks like it might be carbon fiber, but props for the Deutsch connector. I don't know if you're a connector geek like me, but boy, I really love these. It's a sweet connector. All right, inside though, let's take a look at what they've put together. So you can see we've got the transfer case controller here. And I can swing it around just so that it's right side up, at least for text. So we've got the transfer case controller that I custom built here. This is using a Meadow Feather F7. It's got a display on it. They actually left it on here. The intent was that display can come off in, uh, in production. Basically, it's just used for debug output. It's got a couple of relays here. I intended to put the relays on the board, but I didn't have time. Same thing with power supply. This is a 12 to five volt power supply to power this. Again, ideally it would be on the board itself, but we were kind of under time constraints. One thing that you can see here, they've done a couple of things. First, I had them add this one here, the original uh, design. They had omitted the fact that it needed a uh, IO for the lockout hubs on the vehicle. So that's what this is here. This has got that lockout. And in fact, I think we've got, you can see it's got a bodge wire that comes in under here, just soldered right to one of those pins. I had actually, I did that work and then sent them the boards. They also ran into the problem of what this is doing is this is driving a motor on the transfer case that shifts and it's looking at the uh, basically it's looking at a resistance it's sending a voltage and reading that as a resistance to know what gear it's in how it works is not super important but what they've had to do is they added a capacitor in here because driving that motor or driving that motor drops the voltage on this so that it's out of uh, the range of what they wanted so the hope was that this would uh at least smooth out that. So this is an interesting one here, and this is why it's actually back on my bench. They've got this wire here uh, labeled motor brake. It turns out that this transfer case has a brake on the motor that uh, shifts it. And before you shift, you need to release the brake. And then after it shifts, you need to reapply it. And that's basically, you just give it a 12 volt signal to unlock. So it's normally locked and you unlock the motor so that it can shift. If you don't do that, basically the motor tries to, to shift, but you just get a high current draw and it doesn't. If you tie this directly to the when I'm shifting, it doesn't always release in time. So what we had to do is we need to add a separate signal that we unlock, then wait a little bit, then do the shift, then wait a little bit, and then reapply the lock. So it needs to be done separately. So that's why this is back. So you can see this is version 1B. So this is after working with the customer for a bit. We had, this is the second transfer case we were doing. This is a different model. The first transfer case used basically switches inside of it to detect location. This one uses uh, effectively a variable resistor. They work slightly different, but the, the point is that I created one control board that will do both types of transfer cases. So the if we look at the evolution of this, the first one that I ever did for them, this is my prototype, but basically we shipped something uh, that looked just like this to them. This got installed into an enclosure like this and put into a vehicle. This one used switches to tell when the uh, transfer case was in gear. This was a, I think it was a, eh, I think it was a Borg Warner. Uh, I don't remember the, the model, but at any rate, this was what the original was. And then after this, I created a custom PCB 
for a second one. And this one will use either one of the transfer cases. There's a little jumper right down there that you can select which transfer case it is. So then after this, we have to add in both that hub lock, which is this separate board here, and then the, the brake for that motor. And so instead of having yet another bodge and another wire, especially because this is high side switched, we're trying to control uh, 12 volt. It's actually more complex than this circuit here, which is just driving to ground. So then I had to create another board. And this one is the new one that I created for them. It's got a connector here for a display as well. But you can see we're getting more complex and I added in the hub and the transfer case unlock down here. So it's just a little bit larger. But this is the, the typical thing here, right? You start with a prototype, you build something else out of it, and then, oh, you find some issues in what you're doing in the application itself, and you uh, build another one. And again, this is going to be a, an incremental step. We're going to do yet another transfer case after this. And at that point, I will put the onboard, get rid of these relays, put that on board, and I'm going to try to uh, replace this power supply as well and get it onto here. So overall, all of this mess will end up on a single board and then we'll get there. So what's important I think to, to point out though is this is all run with a .NET app. This is all written in C-sharp, running managed code. And I've heard people you know, question that, oh, why would you do this in .NET? And my answer is why the hell wouldn't you? If I know how to write the code and it can perform the task, there's no reason not to use it. Keep in mind this application is not a real-time requirement. We don't have super tight timing requirements. We're basically unlocking and shifting a fairly slow motor that's driving something and reading some feedback to know what gear we're in. So basically we're looking at a switch on the dash. What position is it in? What position is the transfer case in? Is it in where it's supposed to be? If it's not, uh, do some movement to shift into that gear. All of that is machine wise, pretty slow. It does not, you know, if we're, if we're within, you know, probably hundreds of milliseconds, we're completely okay. They also have a bunch of things like limit switches and safeties. So if you drive it for, you know, 200 milliseconds longer than you should have, it actually does not cause a problem. Uh, the code would back up if it did that, if it noticed that it had overdriven, we haven't seen that problem. Uh, and one of these has been installed for well over a year in service. I could write it in a multitude of languages. I could have written this in C. I could have written it in Python. I could have written it in Rust. But I'm most comfortable in C Sharp. It's what I like doing. And the nice thing here is as the complexity of this grows, I can keep adding features to it. And it's not hard to do. If I had done this in something like C, extending it every time I need to add some features gets really onerous. The reality is I'm going to probably add a third transfer case that we support. I may add CAN bus support to this or LIN bus support to this. So as this grows and has more features available, it becomes easier and easier and easier to do if I'm using a high level language that supports a lot of that type of thing. So I really what I wanted to show here is .NET running on embedded hardware that is actually fielded in a real thing. No, this is not a high production number uh, environment. This is going into custom built vehicles, but they are out there installed and doing everything that they were designed to do. There are no complaints. The customer, you know, puts the, the vehicle into the gear that they want and it shifts into the gear that they've selected. Simple enough. And that is my rant for today. Thanks for watching.